I love Minecraft skin. It looks really nice in game. I appreciate this, but not in Blender in this. It's just way too simple. Oh, I'm sorry. Who needs you? You deserve to be quiet over there. As you can see, the one to the right is clearly more interesting, with shadows and bump and all of that sort of stuff. So, here's how to make your skin properly 3D using Blender. You don't have to be a Blender wizard for this, but if this is your first time using Blender, you're probably gonna have a hard time on this tutorial, so maybe go make a donut before coming back. Start off, download the MC Prep Blender add-on, it's free, all-in-one add-on for importing Minecraft models into Blender. I've put a link in the description for you to go and get it. After you've installed and enabled the add-on, press N. This will open the MC Prep menu, navigate down to the Mob Spawner section, sometimes it'll ask you to reload the asset, and then you should find Simple Player and Simple Player Slim in the list of mobs. Now it's time to decide which skin you're going to use. Look at that skin on NameMC.com and pay close attention to the arms. If they are 4 pixels wide making a square, then you should import a simple player model. Otherwise, if the skin has a 3 pixel wide arm, first of all I think that's absolutely disgusting and you should import a simple player slim model. Since my skin uses the classic player model, I'm going to click spawn simple player to add it to fuel pool. Switch to material view. You'd be, wait a minute, that's Steve. But how do I get my skin on the model? What you need to do is select the armature, apply skin from username. This will use the player's current skin as shown on NameMC. In case you want to use your previous skins or anything else, you can always apply the skin from PNG file. But now you should have a flat player model without any 3D details. It looks decent enough with good lighting. But adding proper 3D details will undoubtedly make your renders look significantly better. The next step is what I call cleaning up the skin. This step you'll get your skin ready for adding those details. If you've got a slim skin, you have to go to both of the skin layers and merge these faces to make them square, as well as these faces on the elbow and knees like so. Now for extruding faces, I want you to realise this problem when you extrude a face from a skin because neighbouring pixels can have different colours, Blender wouldn't know which colour to use for the side of the extrusion. Since you'd probably want the side of extrusion to be the same colour as the face that is being extruded, I found a way to get around this where you inset faces like so. This will leave a border of the same colour around the faces you want to extrude, making it obvious to Blender that the side of extrusions should be the same colour as well. Press A in edit mode to select all faces and use the inset tool to inset all faces. It might seem as if inset is not working, but you just need to check the box saying individual to inset each face individually. Change the value to the smallest number that is in zero and your skin is now ready to be extruded. For those who don't know what extrude does, it basically allows you to make a face solid with height like so. And if you can't tell already, the process of adding 3D details to your skin uses a lot of extrusions. And then there's this image showing how there are more than 2000 pixels on each Minecraft skin. There's no way we're going to manually extrude each of the faces. That's why I wrote a script. I know most of you probably never used the scripting tab in Blender, but I promise this script is really simple to use. Select all the faces you want to extrude by the same random amount. Here I'm selecting all the light brown hair faces using Shift. Go copy the script linked in the description, create a new script in Blender and just paste the content in. In the script there are two important variables for those who are not into programming. Variables are just values you can change in order to customize the behavior of the script. ZRAM min is a lower limit of how much each selected face will be extruded by in meters and ZRAM max is the upper limit of how much each selected face will be extruded by also meters. Or, in other words, each selected face will be extruded by a random amount between ZRAM min and ZRAM max. Change the values around, run the script, go back to object mode, and you should see those faces to be extruded by, as expected, some random amount. Go enable armature modifier for both layers, go into post mode and move the bones apart. Make sure to use control when moving bones and remember how much you moved each bone by, so you can put the player back into one piece when you're done with it. The second trick allows you to see the color differences between similar colors but you otherwise cannot see in material view. It's called turning up the world brightness and go into EV render mode. Basically just turning on light theme for Blender. I wouldn't recommend doing this all the time as it really singes my eyeballs. 
Moving on to the actual extruding, you should extrude every face on the layer. Script can help speed things up a bit. Try use different random ranges for each part of the skin. For example, I use darker parts on my hair to extrude it less compared to the lighter parts. So I chose a set of smaller values for the range bound. There may be parts of the skin you want to be flat. In that case, you should use very close values for your upper and lower bounds. There isn't a strict guide on how to make a good 3D skin. My general tip would be, don't be scared to try out stronger extrusions. For example, I use 0.07 for some parts of my skin to make the details more apparent. Remember your goal is to deviate from the flat skin you started with as much as possible, so there really isn't a reason to do small extrusions as they barely make any difference. This will take you a couple of tries to get used to. For reference, my first skin looks absolutely horrendous compared to what I can do now. Just a personal preference though, I usually leave any exposed skin such as the player's face flat as I think it looks much nicer when my face isn't dented. Continue doing this for the entire first layer. Once you're done extruding all the square faces in the first layer, you can go ahead and finish up the layer by extruding these funny faces four faces at a time. So each of the extrusions still makes a square. If you want to speed things up a bit, you can do multiple extrusions in one batch. This is highly manual process and I don't think there are any ways to get around it. Try to make the extrusions look as random as possible just to fit in with the rest of the skin. Now that the first layer is done, we can move on to the second layer. The second layer is a bit more complicated compared to the first because there are extra steps you have to take depending on what your second layer looks like. Heck, some people don't even have anything on the second layer, so if that's you, good for you I guess. The first step to make your second layer is always shift D, duplicate it, and hide the duplicated layer for now so you don't accidentally change it. For the simple case of my skin, I can just extrude my second layer to give it some thickness. The process is similar to what you just did for the other layer, and then I can now unhide the hidden layers and my skin is pretty much done. For those of you who might have hair or clothes on the second layer, you probably want it to be connected to the first layer rather than just be floating on top. So the duplicated layer can be used to connect the two layers. Extrude only the coloured faces and work by exactly one pixel to create a 1x1x1 one 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 volume connecting two layers for each face. I extruded the faces on the head separately from the faces on the body because you'll notice that the size of each pixel on the head is slightly larger than those on the body. We're not done with this connection layer yet. Depending on your skin, you might see these completely black pixels near the edges when going into Cycles Render Mode. This is caused by what's called Z fighting. Here's an example where I have two planes overlapping each other to demonstrate Z fighting. If I color each plane as a different color, say blue and red, the question is what color should the overlapping region show? This isn't painting, like art painting, so red and blue should certainly not add together to make purple. The EV rendering engine really just let the two layers fight to come out on top, while cycles just give up at this point. You can resolve the Z fighting by deleting one of the overlapping faces, leaving only one face at that location. This again is a very manual process, you have to go into every one of these overlapping face pairs and delete one of them. Finally, if you want to add an extra item to your skin, say a sword on your back, you can use Ctrl P to set the armature as parent. And make sure to update its modifier settings. Anyways, if you liked the video, go ahead and like the video. Most importantly, join the Discord server linked in the description. Right, bye.